What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be the season finale of Cartel Crew, um, <clears throat> episode, I mean, season one, episode 10. Let me tell y'all something, VH1 and um, Cartel Crew, y'all left us hanging. Let me tell y'all something. I ain't even mad at the producers of Cartel Crew. The producers, the producers said, oh, we're going to get a season two. We're going to get a season two. The way they left this shit at the end, are you crazy? I That's like that old school cliffhanger, like who shot JR type cliffhanger, like... I'm going to be talking about well, what the fuck happened until I start seeing commercials for season two. Okay? Now, with that being said, let's go on and get into this episode. So, you know it's the finale. So, they're wrapping stuff up. Um, and like I said, I thought they had wrapped it all up until the end, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Maria's having a birthday party for her daughter. Maria and Michael, their daughter's turning two. And, you know, the big thing this season has been Marie not having a relationship with her parents because of Michael. Um, and, you know, in the beginning of the season, I was like, well, if they were part of the life, why they mad at her for dating Grizel Blanco? But what was explained later on was that they, they sort of got into that <clears throat> mode because they, they did get out of the life um, and they cleaned their, their lives up and they just didn't want their daughter. And um, dating Grizel Blanco's uh, son, especially with... All of Grizel Blanco's, um, you know, what she did. Now, I think there's a part that's unfair to blame Michael for what his mom did. However, Michael was in the life at one point, too. So, you know, so she's having a birthday party. And Michael's telling her, look, don't get your hopes up. They ain't been here for Christmas. They weren't here when she was born. They, you know, like, don't get your hope up that all of a sudden now they're going to just show up because she's turning two. But Marie really wants to try to reach out to them. So she calls them and she said, you know, I know my dad's not going to answer the call. He never answers my call, which he didn't. It went to voicemail. She left a message. Um, and so, unfortunately, we're just going to see, um, going to have to see how that, how that pans out. Then we see Stephanie. Now, again, remember, Stephanie came back from Columbia and wanted to try to come to some sort of meeting of the minds with her dad. And we got a little insight last week on her and her dad's relationship. We get more insight this week. What we find out is, because she, she's having dinner with her mom. Her mom came over to cook her dinner, and they're having some a drink and a sip and everything. And she's talking to her mom, and what we find out is, not only did dad go to jail and lose everything, because you know, the feds are going to seize everything in the bank account. They're going to seize everything in the house. They're going to seize the house. They're going to seize the cars. Pretty much overnight, you go from sugar to shit. It's done. It's a wrap. And what we find out is her mom held him down while he was in jail. Like, she became a single parent overnight. She went from rich to poor overnight. Took Had two kids to take care of, but she also held him down while he was in jail. And those people who you ever had a family member or, or a friend or whatever in jail, you know what I mean when I say held him down while he was in jail. But then when he got out of jail, she left him. I mean, he left her and left her for another woman. Might have been one of the women he was messing with all along. Who knows? But it was another woman involved that got messy, and at the interim, he left her left her alone so mom is like i don't really have no use for this dude and so stephanie was saying look i i don't feel like y'all need to be best friends i get that i respect that but things are really going in a good direction with my career and i really would love to look out in the audience and see both of y'all there i would love for y'all to be able to be backstage with me without it being um, a t tense situation. Hell, I would love for y'all to be able to fly out to one of my shows and be on the same plane without it being a problem. And his, her mom was like, uh-uh. She said, I'm cool. But I don't want to be around him. She said, Mom, you just got to let that go. She said, uh-uh. You're not understanding what I'm saying. I didn't let all that go. I just don't want to be around him. I don't want him in my presence, and I don't have to have him around me. And she was saying, well, Mom, you have to forgive him. She said, again, you, you're not hearing me. I forgive him. I just don't want to be around him. Period. And I hear where mama coming from. So Stephanie decides to do that old bullshit. I'm going to invite both of y'all, but I'm not going to tell the other one that the other one is coming. So dad is there. Mom shows up. And you can see mama shocked when she come around that corner and see old dad sitting at the, at the table. And Stephanie explains her position. She said, I know that, you know, the way I got y'all here was, you know, was, 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 was kind of messed up. She said, but let me explain where I'm coming from. And she played her case or whatever. And dad told her, dad said, look, y'all not kids anymore. 
We don't have to co-parent. We don't have to communicate. He was like, I don't have a problem with your mother. Your mother has a problem with me. I don't have a problem being around your mother. She got a problem being around me. So mom got upset. And and um, and I like my um uh Stephanie's mom. I like she's she's got a nice little style about her. She's got her cute little hair and everything. I like her mom. But mom was like, Well, what do you mean? She said, See, this is what I'm talking about. You owe me. And I think all her mom wants from him is a sincere and genuine apology. Because she accepted the fact that he was in the drug life. She knew what he was doing. She wasn't stupid. She knew what was going on. He wasn't lying to her about his lifestyle. She enjoyed the lifestyle. I don't think her issue is the fact that he went to jail. I think her issue is you left me hanging, but I held it down. And as soon as you got an opportunity, you left me and you left your kids. And that's where I think her issue is. And her thing is, I don't want my anger to me to be misconstrued as I still have a, I still care about him or I still have feelings for him because I don't I'm just and see when she says that she forgives him that's the problem you haven't forgiven him you don't have no feelings for him I believe she don't have no feelings for this man but I do believe that there's still some anger there and that she hasn't forgiven him and so she ends up walking out of the restaurant and Stephanie goes out to talk to her and she tells her she says look you got you have him thinking because this is how mom feels. You got him thinking that I still have feelings for him or I still like him or something. And I don't. I just don't like the fact of what he did to us and that he just doesn't seem to have any remorse. Because dad was sitting there kind of had a little sneer. He was kind of snickering a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But she was like, don't get it twisted. I don't give a fuck about your dad. Like, I don't care about him. But I don't want him to think that it's because I have feelings for him. It don't have nothing to do with that either. I just don't fuck with him. You know, and so that's kind of how that went down. Um, later on in the episode, we see that um, Stephanie made a decision. Because she was saying, I don't want to be in the middle anymore. I don't want to make a decision. I want to be able to invite both of y'all. But she made a decision and she ended up inviting her mom because that's who's been there. You know, that's who's been there for her. So then we see Diana and um, Kat. And they have a conversation. And Diana basically says, since she been back from Columbia... Nicole's been sending her these like messages saying, you know, you betrayed me, you know, you cheated on me, which I always find it interesting when friends use relation use relationship language. You cheated on me. That's a bit harsh. But basically, Marie is angry at Diana because Marie felt like Diana was the last one standing in her beef with Nicole. And that Marie, out of all of them, would be the last one to not sort of, take in her mind, take Nicole's side over hers. Um, and Kat said, look, you know, Kat's been about no bullshit from day one. Kat said, look, I get it. I understand why Marie might be mad, but at what point do you just let it go? She had to understand that while we were in Columbia... You know, you just got over the drama and the fact that y'all were able to talk and, and really understand each other's point of view. That don't make y'all best friends. It really just make y'all mature as adults that decided to just move on. And Marie needs to understand that. And for Marie to keep acting like somebody is is betraying her or something just because we decided to be adults about it, she's just going to have to deal with it. You know, and but I do feel like what I have a problem with is that Diana is avoiding her because she said, well, I just want to talk to her. I want to talk to her. and She's not answering her text. See, when that when you know somebody's upset with you, regardless of whether you agree with why they're upset with you and that's your friend, then you make time. You know, if you feel like you don't want to have a conversation over a text message, I get it. If you feel like you don't even want to have it over the phone, I get it. But you make time to go see her, especially if you know that something's going on and there's a problem. So, but that's my only beef. Like, I understand where Diana's coming from, but I just I just feel like it could have been handled a little bit better. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We get to the birthday party. Now, here's what, now, Kat, I mean, not Kat, Marie, I was sort of with you. I didn't agree with you, but I was sort of with you as far as you blaming people until we get to the birthday party for your daughter and Kat's there. And you talking about how Kat's your only friend and how Kat got your back and Kat this, Kat that. Kat was the one that invited Nicole to damn Columbia. So how you mad? How are you still mad at Stephanie? And you mad at Diana. But you ain't mad at Kat. And Kat was the one that invited her to go to Columbia to begin with. I'm confused to did. Marie. Marie. So... 
But she had bigger fish to bigger fish to fry at the party because her parents didn't show up. And Kat had a good conversation with her. Kat said, look, there's family you are born with, and then there's family that you make. She said, your daughter, she might be missing her grandparents, but she's not missing family. She has two parents that love her. She's got family around her. She is loved. It is her birthday. You know, you got to just be thankful for the family. You know, for us, we're here. You know, we're going to always be here. We're going to always have your back. You know, and, you know, Michael was like, look, because she was, you know, she didn't want to cut the cake and everything. She was like, I just want to wait. I want to wait. Cal was like, baby, we've been waiting a long time. You're going to have to move this. You're going to have to keep it going. You know, at a kid's party, they don't have the attention span. You got to keep it going. And, um... She said, you know what, you're right. She kind of got mad at Michael when Michael was like, they're not coming. You know, he was like, I don't want to break your heart. I'm sorry, but we can't hold this part. They're not coming. And um, she called them again and everything. They didn't answer the phone. And, you know, I felt really bad for her. I really did. But um, they went on with the party. She wiped her tears away. She said, you know what, Kat, you're right. I'm going to just, I'm going to stop dwelling on what was. I guess my parents no longer want me in their life. They don't want my daughter to be a part of their life. And, you know, Michael had said that at one point. Michael was like, what did, you know, be mad at me. Don't like me. But what did she do? What did the baby do to you? That's your grandchild. You know, you don't have to like me. You can say you don't want me in your house. You can say you don't want me around. But, you know, wow. How, how, you know, how you going to do that to a baby? But people do it all the time, unfortunately, you know. So, we ended up, um... So like I said, they ended up moving on with the party, okay? So now we get to the main event for this episode, which is Stephanie's release party. Remember last week she wanted to do a single release party. She said that this is, you know, it was a very important night for her. We see her getting ready, and you see them, you know, getting the venue together and everything. And she said, you know, there have always been rumors around about her and maybe sleeping around to get what she, you know, get to the top or to get whatever. She ain't at the top yet, but y'all know what I'm saying. That's she said that in the first episode. She was like, I ain't even at the top yet. And people talking about I'm sleeping to get to the top. I ain't even there yet. Um, but she said that now even Lil Wayne's fiance, which I ain't know Lil Wayne was engaged. But even Lil Wayne's fiance is even having some issues with her. And she said that. Is, she said it's different this time because it's not just random people on the internet. She said this is somebody that has influence over Lil Wayne and it could detri be detrimental to me moving forward with Young Money. Now, here's where I'm a little confused at it. At the beginning of this season, did they not say she was signing Young Money? So why does she keep saying if Young Money decides to sign me, if, 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 and that Lil Wayne is her? So is she under some sort of like, I mean, I don't know the music industry like that. To, uh, to no, but is she under some sort of like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, probationary type, um, you know, deal. And but they haven't decided to commit to a full record deal. Like, I'm just a little confused, and I'm not even trying to be funny. I don't understand. And so, if y'all know, drop it in them comments. Let me know. But it seems like she has a relationship with Young Money. But she's saying if they decide to sign me, so have they just chose? I, I, that's why I'm just a little lost. So y'all gotta clear that up for me. Let let a sister know. I'm a little confused at it. Let me know. So Michael shows up. Now remember last week, Michael was trying to get an early release from his probation, and um, he went to court. He said he had been in court since five thirty that morning. I'm sure it was because he got there early. He probably had to be there at eight, and he was nervous and got there first thing in the morning. Oh, dark thirty. We've all done that, and um. He said the prosecutor was like, hell no, don't let him off. No, no, no. But the judge went on and let him go. Now, again, I don't know all the ins and outs of his um of his case. I'm happy for him. He said, you know, now he can travel. He said, you know, he'd been very limited, you know, with trying to build up his business and not being able to take, you know, meetings outside of Miami or do things. He said, you know, I couldn't travel without permission, which is part of, but that's another reason why his ass didn't go to Columbia, even if even if it wasn't a bounty on his head, his ass couldn't go to no damn Columbia. But that's another conversation anyway. But he was saying that, you know, he couldn't even leave the jurisdiction. Which means he couldn't leave Dade County. Or is it Broward County? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Miami. It's Miami Dade. So it's Dade. Anyway, he couldn't leave that area without permission from his probation officer. So, like, when Marie went to New York, he couldn't go. Even though it was a girl's trip. But even if he wanted to, he couldn't go without getting permission from his probation officer. So, he's free now. He is free and clear. He said, you know... For the first time in his life, he's pursuing a legal career, legitimate business, and he's ready to go. He feels like a new man. I'm happy for you, Michael. 
um, as a person of color who made a mistake, um, you were able to do your five years and convince a judge that they should invest and trust that you are going to continue to be on a straight and narrow. And so I can respect that. Um, and I'm happy for you. Um, last week I thought you were being a little spoiled by wanting it, but Hey, nothing beats a failure, but a try. Hell, let them tell you no. So I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you at all. Diana shows up with a girlfriend, but Diana is flirting with um Magic, who is Michael's business partner. Now, Diana said, look, I know I'm in a relationship with a woman, but I don't think I'm a full lesbian because sometimes I be missing a man, and Magic is looking real good right now. Kat was like, I don't know nothing. I don't see nothing. I don't hear nothing. That's y'all business, whatever y'all do. I see. that's why I like Kat. Kat minds her own damn business. Kat, at least this season, now, you know, next season she might switch it up on us. But Cat minds her own damn business, okay? She said, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Y'all flirting, whatever. Um, Nicole shows up with a barely there dress. Go for it, Nicole. Hey, look. I started following her on Instagram so I could, you know, tag her in my um, reviews and stuff like that and just kind of see what she has going on. She stay naked, you know? So that dress, that's right up her alley. She do her thing. I ain't, look. I ain't mad at you, boo. You bought that body and you are proud of it and you don't and you don't care about the fact you tell it you let everybody know you bought that body. And I can re, I can respect that you are upfront and honest about what you, what it is that you have and don't have. I agree I can respect that. Um They they low shows up, they're taking pictures, they're having a good time, and all of a sudden we look up and who is standing there? Miss Marie. And Marie looks cute. Marie has this whole Marilyn Monroe thing going on that I really like. The platinum blonde, with, and she's got, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but she's got those big lips, and she wears her, you know, she likes to wear, like, bold colors. And, again, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way at all. Um, but I, I, I like Marie's little look. Marie pulls um, Diana aside and proceeds to tell her how she how she portrayed her and how she feels and this is and I'm a loyal bitch and that's why I don't have no friends now because people are never loyal to me and da 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 and they end up going back and forth and she's she starts to get a little out of pocket and this is how you could tell this was a real industry party because Diana wanted to smack the bejeebies out of Marie. But she held her cool. Like, she had to walk off for a minute and come back. And she was like, look, Marie, you know I don't let people talk to me the way you're talking to me right now. Like, you playing with me. You really, you know I'm trying to hold my cool, but you really playing with me right now. Like, Diana had to let her know, like, whew, you better be lucky. Lil Wayne about to walk in this door in five minutes because you could definitely, you know, y'all look at these reality shows and you could tell when it's a real industry event versus some shit they set up for the purposes of filming the scene. You could tell this was a real industry event because Stephanie ain't get up and get in it. Like, none of the girls got up and got in it. They were just sort of standing off to the side, kind of being embarrassed a little bit. And Stephanie was like, yo, this is not a joke. Like, this is not some little get-together. This is my business right now. And they are really getting loud. <laughs> But Diana, they eventually were able to, to work it out. And Marie was like, you know, Diana's my girl. I can't stay mad at her. So what was the purpose of that whole scene? I don't know, but whatever. Um, Stephanie goes in the back to get ready for a performance. And look who's there. Little Wayne is in the house. And um, he watched her perform. And she did her song. I like that song. I really do. I, mean, I hope they... I hope I have to go back and look and see if they put the um, link up there if it's on um, iTunes yet. I would buy that song. I kind of like it. It's cute. Um, but she did her little performance. It was cute or whatever. You know, she. I feel like she was a little stiff. Maybe because she didn't have enough room. But remember when she did the performance earlier on in the season, she was giving it. You know, I feel like she was. A, maybe she was nervous. You know what I mean? Because, you know, she probably was a little nervous. But she did her thing now. Don't get me wrong. She did her thing. And Wayne was there, and Mac Main was there, and he gave her a hug when it was over and told her she did a good job, and she felt really satisfied, right? So we think that's the end of the, I think that's the end of the episode. It went to commercial, and I'm glad I checked the time, because they caught me like that earlier this season when I thought the episode was over, but something happened after I cut it off, and I, I didn't catch it till the next week. But, um, next thing you know, we come back, they showing scenes. They said the next morning. And there's pillows all over the place and broken glass and furniture turned over. And Michael is picking Marie up from the damn police station. And she still got the outfit on from the night before and her hair, her pony, because she had had this long ponytail. The ponytail was gone. Her makeup was off. And she and Marie was a mess. Okay, Marie was, she ran to the car. She got in the car. She was like, let's just go, let's go, let's go. I just want to get out of here. I just want to get out of here. 
And then Michael does, does this whole diatribe about family and knowing who family really is and who really has your back. And then it ends. I said, the hell y'all didn't leave me hanging. I want to know, know what the hell happened. Who was fighting? Why did Marie get arrested? Where her ponytail go? These are questions I need the answers to. And I need y'all to hurry up and give me a season two. Okay? Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in them comments, please.